Smash Jack. Hello there, and yes, it's time for yet another list. We've covered Super Nintendo games that deserve to be on the Virtual Console, we've covered Super Nintendo games that deserve Super Nintendo sequels, and we've covered Super Nintendo games that deserve modern sequels or remakes. Next, let's take a look at some NES games that, for whatever reason, never made the leap from the NES to the Super Nintendo, but absolutely had every reason to. Thanks again to the Racket Boy forums for the idea of this video. The first game that always comes to mind for this idea is Ninja Gaiden. Sure, there was the completely lame Ninja Gaiden trilogy, which combined the three NES Ninja Gaiden games in one cartridge, but the graphics are barely improved, the music sounds warped, and the only real improvement made was a password system. The whole thing feels sloppy and ultimately pointless. I would have rather have seen a real Super Nintendo Ninja Gaiden game, but the cutscenes, the atmosphere, and the music alone would have been awesome. It warrants mentioning that there was almost a Ninja Gaiden Genesis game that was similar to the original Ninja Gaiden arcade, but it was never released. That's a bummer, but you can probably find the ROM online somewhere, it's pretty interesting to look at. Next is Blaster Master. This is a perfect example of a game that would work great on the Super Nintendo because it's the kind of hybrid game the SNES always lent itself well to, featuring two modes of gameplay in your Sophia module for side-scrolling, and outside of it in a top-down view that emphasizes exploration. The SNES could have done so much more with a game like this, making the mazes less repetitive and confusing and more intuitive, while overpowering your module even more on the side-scrolling levels. This game can be frustrating, but it's still worth checking out if you haven't, and you'll see what I mean about the SNES missing out here. There was a sequel on the Genesis, of course, and that game catered to the strengths of the Genesis hardware, and rightfully so. I have a feeling the Super Nintendo sequel would have been a lot different, and would have made for an interesting comparison at the very least. Next I'll mention Crystallis. The gameplay here isn't why I want a Super Nintendo version, as Crystallis is kind of a Zelda clone, only with the ability to jump. I thought the story and characters were super weird, and the SNES could have had a good opportunity to build on that world. There's all sorts of crazy stuff going on here. The end of the world caused by a thermonuclear war, science and technology have been shunned as a result, but a magic floating tower contains this emperor guy who rules from high above where he plans to revive science and technology to uh, be more evil, I guess. There's swords, sages, spells, wizards, all sorts of fun stuff. I should mention this did get a Game Boy Color version that's pretty different, but come on, a Super Nintendo edition would have been nice too. I'll mention River City Ransom. Again, not necessarily because of the gameplay, because it's a pretty standard beat-em-up, although it does have some non-linear RPG elements to a certain extent, but because the game is so damn goofy. You gotta rescue your girlfriend, and in the process you have to get through gangs like the Squids and the Generic Dudes. The gameplay is very much like Double Dragon, but if it were made by the people who made Earthbound, the vibe is very silly and could have been made that much better on the SNES. The potential of this game makes me think of something like the Legend of the Mystical Ninja series, the first game especially, which was chock full of humor but also a great game on its own. I should mention this game did have a remake on the Game Boy Advance, but they ditched the multiplayer, so that sucks. Next is DuckTales, and yes I know this game got a modern remake, and also an NES sequel as well. Still, it always kind of baffled me that Capcom kept the Disney license but never expanded on the first two DuckTales games. They did make Goof Troop, which was excellent, but then they went on to do a game for Bonkers? Did anybody even like that show? Come on! Anyway, I didn't really like DuckTales Remastered. The cutscenes were endless and completely unnecessary, and it's more of a modern remake instead of a newly realized game. A 16-bit game would have been a lot more fun. I mean, just look at Donald Duck Mahono Boshi and how awesome that looks, or Mickey to Donald Magical Adventure 3. Those are good examples of how a good SNES DuckTales game could have been, complete with Scrooge's fun and addicting gameplay mechanics like bouncing around on the cane. Base Wars was one of my favorites as a kid. I love the premise of this game. Team owners were tired of paying players outrageous salaries, so instead they decided to uh, pay outrageous prices for robots to play baseball instead. Anyway, I love the fighting element in this game. If there's a close play at any base, the two players involved fight each other. That's awesome, and think of the possibilities if you added more fighting styles, more weapons, more explosions, customizing mech robots. It could be like frickin' Cybernator Baseball, who wouldn't love that? I guess the closest thing this comes to is Super Baseball 2020, which is pretty fun in its own way, but I want more combat and fighting in my baseball. 
Then we have a more puzzling game here with Kid Icarus, which was of course developed by Nintendo. This game got a sequel on the original Game Boy, which is pretty good, but the Super Nintendo was entirely ignored. I don't think they ever even planned a Kid Icarus SNES game, and that's a shame because there's a lot to like here. I always liked the old arcade-style level design this game presented. Add some SNES bells and whistles, and I really think you've got something there. Thankfully, this game did get another game in the series for the 3DS, Kid Icarus Uprising, which has gotten mixed reviews thanks to the controls, but I guess that's as close as we'll get to it, SNES Kid Icarus. Metal Storm is another game with an interesting gameplay mechanic that calls for a keen and particular sense for some intricate level design. As you can see, you can reverse gravity to walk on the floor or the ceiling. It's a pretty fun game that makes for an interesting challenge. Despite getting a huge push from Nintendo, the game didn't do too well, and any series potential here just kind of vanished. That's really a shame, I feel there's a lost opportunity here. A potential Super Nintendo sequel may not have sold well, but I guarantee you it'd be considered a quote unquote hidden gem now. If you've never checked out Metal Storm for NES, I highly recommend it. I'll also mention Life Force, also known as Salamander, the classic NES shoot-em-up. I touched on this when I talked about Gradius 3 in the SNES sequels video, but it would have been really cool to see how the Super Nintendo could have improved on this game. The same way Super R-Type, which pretty much sucked, was improved upon in R-Type 3, which is way better. The Super Nintendo definitely wasn't the best system for shoot-em-ups, but they seemed to get a better grasp of what they were doing the more time went on. Life Force got about a dozen ports, even to PS1 and Sega Saturn, and I'm willing to bet a Super Nintendo version would have been every bit as good as those. Last, I'll bring up kind of an odd choice, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. This game is polarizing to say the least. Many people consider the top-down gameplay of the first Zelda game to be the only acceptable gameplay type for Zelda, and why not? It works awesome. Zelda 2 does have, uh, some flaws to say the least. The random battles, the difficulty, the pointless existence of certain villagers, the general sense of confusion as to where to go. But hey, who's to say those things can't be fixed and made better? I'd love to see Nintendo say fuck it and take a real risk and remake a game like Zelda 2 in the same way they made Link Between Worlds, just because number one, I think it could be done and done well, and number two, I think Zelda 2 is better than people remember. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.